Um, but in, in particular to just realize like, you think that this stuff that they're doing on the skirts of things that seem like not related to you, the trans stuff, the, all of that stuff that's not related to you, it is very much related to you. Because once they have the precedence, they will come for your rights too. <laughs> no, it's, it's becoming Handmaid's Tale in reality. <laughs> Hello, friends. We're back for Black and Curious. I'm Kandrin. Hey, hey, it's Deja. How y'all doing? Hello. <laughs> if you've never been here before, we do commentary on pop culture and, you know, topics that hit our real lives as well. We're here multiple times a week. And today, our topic, I don't know. If you've been here for a while, <laughs> we talk about the manosphere because they get on our nerves so bad. So, I'm from um. And one of our previous conversations, I actually mentioned that it seemed like they were headed down the radicalization timeline. And this has uh -oh. become a more prevalent um, conversation of late. Um, I will link down below, like as we're going through the conversation, I have a few sources, a few uh, podcasts that I've heard, that I've heard articles that I've read regarding radicalization in the manosphere. So... I just wanted to have a deeper conversation about it because the girls are getting bamboozled, honestly, especially not the manosphere as a whole because they know what they're doing. But I feel like the black manosphere where mm -hmm. they think that everything is Goodbye. all good. BS. Y'all are getting bamboozled, boo. You're getting bamboozled. Um, and you're getting bamboozled into some right wing ideology. So I just wanted to have a few words with y'all um, if y'all make it over here to just keep you aware okay <laughs> <laughs> doubtful that they fit to be here but oh uh, so anyway away. <laughs> basically the thread that is linking um the manosphere it's very extreme far right ideology really is this idea of like traditional values and traditional family where like the man's the provider the wife is submissive and like all of that is in line with what politicians are doing as far as taking women's rights away from their bodies um, <laughs> it's crazy. in terms of like the Roe v. Wade of it all like all of this stuff is interconnected deeply and for me i'm just kind of like to the, the roe v wade piece of it like why do you why do men no matter what race you are why do you feel like you need or you should have the say over our bodies and what we do with them yeah like and it's a control thing and this is not just a roe v wade just so we're clear like right. there are it's more so many sad. Is there are so many decisions, even questions before the Supreme Court now, thank God that they came to their senses slightly as far as like with the abortion pill, like that's been a whole big thing in the, you know, the world lately where basically now they're saying like, not only don't we think it should be a state's choice, which is already kind of like code for racism, honestly. <laughs> Um, and really patriarchy in all of its forms and white supremacy. It's like, not only do we think that shouldn't be states' rights, but we don't think anybody should have the right. So let's just not only try to outlaw the act of abortion, but let's try to outlaw the actual thing that people are using to get abortions, which most people are using as some version of an abortion pill. So now we're going to try to invalidate all of that. So that's happening too. So like all of these things are interconnected. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important for us as as Black people um, here, um, but in, in particular, to just realize, like, you think that this stuff that they're doing on the skirts of things that seem, like, not related to you, the trans stuff, the, all of that stuff that's not related to you, it is very much related to you. Because once they have the precedence, they will come for your rights, too. <laughs> no, it's, it's becoming Handmaid's Tale in reality. And I don't even okay. watch it though. Cause when I, when I watch my, so my homegirl, shout out to uh, 
Shayla Ghost. I think she did an episode with us, well, with me a year ago at this point. But either way, um, she tried to get me into this show. I watched like 30 minutes maybe of one episode with her and I was like, I can't do this. That I'm shit was on it. triggering and traumatizing. No, thank you. Yeah. So, to um, now be living in a world that is starting to look like where they ended up mm-hmm. i'm going to mexico <laughs> and we have like, a conversation about that too i'll link it above where we talk about how you know black women are banding together and getting the hell out of here because it's not safe no and especially when when you have um to our to the point of our sunday brunch earlier today when you have men who are in the world speaking about black men specifically speaking about protecting us and living a soft life and being this you know fluff now there's i'm not saying that he's perfect or any of the sort watch the live you know what i'm talking about but it's just kind of like like what what's going on yeah. <laughs> like what's going on 100%. like so mm-mm. go ahead sorry no i was just gonna say there's an episode of offline um this show it's like on a political network anyways but it's a really good episode if you're interested i'll leave the link down below that they really do draw the direct line between the manosphere and far-right ideology and like they really they make it crystal clear like i've been seeing it and i've been kind of saying a few things on the margins like i said i'll try to find the conversation where we talk i think it was the one where we talked about how they're the black manosphere is chief disciple um expired but um the dearly departed i think that's what it might be not so dearly <laughs> not so dearly um but speaking that of that like for his family, they, uh, for his family yes um there's also been some some words about the black media of it all and mm-hmm. black media participating in this sort the of academics is one of them the main one, honestly. So if you never heard of the story, <laughs> DJ Academics fine with Rumble, which is a conservative mega, I don't know, they're like a conservative bullhorn, honestly. They have they have uh shows also by Donald Trump Jr., um Hannity, Marge Taylor Green, they all have their platforms also on Rumble. So it's like, is this what you're aligning with? And honestly, yes, that is what they're aligning with because it is in line. That is the next step. That is the next step. And also Um, I saw an article on it. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just rambling. Go ahead. Oh, you're totally fine. I'm just kind of like, what the hell is going on? Because the thing that I'm seeing, like I spoke about with our Sunday brunch is like this tearing down of the black man, the positive black man. Now he could be problematic. We don't know, right? We're waiting for May 9th to come through and let us know what the C is. But like the tearing down of a positive black man and like demolishing his the mantle that he was building, right? And then you have the thing that I've been seeing a lot on TikTok is now here lately is all these white men or Jewish men, maybe, that are like speaking so highly of us, the black women. Mm. And speaking about how, you know, our, the men tear us down and like how their mothers and grandmothers and aunts and whoever would like, you know, banish them and write them off for speaking about their women that way. But here it is that Black men tear us down all the time. And then you had one who was seemingly starting to speak in that manner and they demolished his mantle. And it's just kind of like, to me, it's looking like, in conspiracy theory okay just go with me here but to me it's looking like they are trying to continue to separate and divide black men and black women interesting um just by because i'm like i i am always an outlier i ain't gonna lie to you i'm always an outlier i don't go one way or the other i just kind of be standing there looking from left to right trying to figure out well you know what the hell you got going on and Mm -hmm. In these situations, I'm doing the same thing. I'm like, <laughs> like what the hell? Right, here. right. Like something, something is coming, mm-hmm. and I don't know what that something is, but this shit is looking fishy. So I'm just gonna stand here like I always do as the outlier and look left and right and see what y'all got going on. I'm not joining either party. <laughs> I'm just looking. 
So speaking of conspiracy theories, um, <laughs> this article from MSNBC talks about how the shade room has also been complicit in some of this in that, yeah, that they have been co- quoting uh, conspiracy theories and other white wing, right wing politician talking points without reference. So they're just saying it and they're not giving any attribution but essentially they're they're kind of putting those ideas out there on their platform as well so i don't know it's just a lot that's fucking scary so i'm not gonna lie to you i fell down a rabbit hole last night on tiktok Mm. and the people were talking about boule which is b-o-u-l-e um, mm-hmm. as it relates to church and church culture for black people okay. and they were talking mm-hmm. of, in reference to the boule as it being the divine nine um mm-hmm. the the prominent pastors in the church so like al sharpton jesse jackson um martin luther king like they were listening to all these people and then the, the new props are my pastor michael todd and this other fuck i forgot his name just that quick this other guy and you wanna, saying, you want to run my blood hot <laughs> mike todd let me tell you something it's scary it's scary i've actually seen him in person because the the chase to attend um is one of those like hipster hill songy sort of churches <laughs> and he was one of the guest pastors and he was one Bye. of the pastors that I I was uncomfortable with his sermon. I was very uncomfortable with his sermon. Um yeah. Oh, yeah. Find so, you're Mike Todd, I always look at him with a side eye because I just did not I could not get on board with what he was saying in that in that particular sermon. So this is my own experience. This is not a snippet. From the internet, this is my own experience where I was just like, Mm-mm, no, no, I ain't gonna be able to agree. do it. Mm-mm, ain't gonna be able to do it. Well, I didn't save it. Did what's, the, what's the pastor who was always cheating on his wife? What's his name? John Gray. <laughs> I know that one John all Gray right. actually, John Shout Gray out to Tasha K. <laughs> John, well, <laughs> if you watched our <laughs> our brunch. <laughs> I mean, but she she, had a few broke words. The, she broke that story, okay? I ain't mad what about her. Tasha K. But um, Welcome back. John Gray is actually a really good. He's a good, powerful, traditional preacher who I was able to really get into. But again, his personal life is a mess. But that Mike Todd, I he's a no for me, absolutely unequivocally a no. Damn, I'm so mad that I can't. Let me see if I can search it real quick so I can get y'all the name. Because Dave was but like, while you're searching. That type of ideology, I mean, I think you could put, I always say this, you could put that traditional, very traditional Christianity, Black church ideology. I always say that if Republicans were, could get themselves together to stop being racist, they would have a very good hold, a chokehold on Black people and immigrants too, honestly, because conservative very very conservative the only reason why a lot of especially like black church going people vote for democrats is because the republicans are so damn racist that's the real tea you ain't lying ain't no lies told there that's the real racist have you found what you're going to say otherwise i'm going to move on i'm still searching it's so they didn't put charlemagne in here This shit is crazy. Go on TikTok, y'all, and just put in Boule. You'll see all this stuff. I'm trying to find... Well, as you're talking about TikTok, I do want to say, like, this is this is a, a standard radicalization pipeline with these algorithms, with the YouTube. TikTok is masterful at the algorithm and how they just rabbit hole you into exactly what it is that you've been watching, but it just keeps getting worse. Like one of one of my friends was like, she watched a random video, and then the next thing she knew, she was getting fed all kinds of foolish videos. And she was like, This is this is not what I do. This is not who I am. So if you want to hear more about that, New York Times has a series called The Rabbit Hole. I listened to that like I want to say like last year or a year or so ago, but it just follows people down the radicalization pipeline and like gets people de-radicalized. But this is radicalization. That's my point. It's like 
all this stuff is radicalization. So you just need to be aware and try to get some opposing viewpoints as you're watching all this stuff. Like as you're in the manosphere, try to find a woman who's saying something of value. That's not that. Be clear. But like, so that you can like make sure that all of your all of your <laughs> your your brain cells are firing at their full capacity and you're not just falling down a damn rabbit hole and and going to land somewhere that you didn't even think you wanted to be. Period. You found it. Go. So, of course, this man is related to the, the past that we were just talking about. No, not thanks. related like by blood, but like they are associated together. So okay. this clip on the top says, Mike Todd's pastor compares Jesus to a stripper, and this pastor's name is Tim Ross. No. I'm on, okay. hold on. Let me let me go ahead and start it back, baby. From heaven. And it was spread to them. These people are foolish. We don't make it rain on booty cheeks. Are you kidding we me? We don't make it rain on strippers. We only reverence one stripper, and that's the one that took off glory to put on humanity wow. and then get butt naked on a cross to die for both you and me. All right, we're going to go ahead. You have got to be kidding there. with me, right? <laughs> but no lie. No lie. That's what I saw. And then that's the, the thing that took me down the boule rabbit hole. Like, what? It's Are you people crazy. idiots? Are you like I have a like a legitimate question? Are you people idiots, bro? And 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 I'm not gonna lie to you. Like as I was down this rabbit hole, the thing that I kept saying to myself and to my my people that be surrounding me, my my energetic spirits, right? I was just like, yo, this shit is crazy. Like you mean to tell me that none of these people can think for themselves? Nobody has critical thinking anymore. And while I understand that like the world that we live in as a millennial who's uh, an elder millennial, let me be clear, as an elder millennial, I understand the world that we live in is so set up to distract you from yourself and everything else, right? And and set you upon these different quests that don't have nothing to do with your own self-discovery and figuring Nothing. out a relationship with God for yourself. Nothing. But like... Okay, I, I get that th there's this conspiracy with the divine. This is all alleged. This is TikTok shit. I don't believe any of this, but this is the, the rabbit hole I fell down through, okay? But there's this conspiracy that the the powers that be as, a, as it relates to Black uh, religion and superiority and uh, those who are the speaker of the masses in that sense, the boule is what they call it, is like uh -huh. this... this a pseudo religion sect sector in it within in itself that's taking you away from it's it's like um the illuminati there you go that's the thing <laughs> this be, is not new though they be Pastors talking about have been thing. preaching this for a long time especially as it relates to the divine nine like people have been preaching about this for a long time this is not new but like Okay, great. I hear what you're saying for the pastors that are against this ideology, this the the divine nine, the the the, the pastors in the church, the the church heads, the ones that you, the figureheads that you see, black wise, mm -hmm. you know, Martin Luther mm -hmm. King, Jesse Jackson, uh, Al Sharpton, all of these folks, right, and Mike Todd and and Tim Ross. Now, like, is there no critical thinking? Like, I understand there isn't. I grew up in a generation of people that, you know, that's when the internet came to be, right? So we was all online figuring shit out and making making things shake and happen. And now we are, you know, we've gone 20 plus, well, more than that at this point, several years of, like, all this new innovation and technology, and people can't think for themselves, like everybody's fucking sheeple and i understand that this that also is a conspiracy that everybody is sheeple right but like i was i ain't gonna lie to y'all last night i was in here so tore up like what what but i think that goes back to like that radicalization pipeline that i was talking about before it's like before we were <laughs> at the risk of sounding incredibly old which um it's what it is i just i just we... hate this <laughs> we kind of had to slow down and like the internet was not so fast. Like Google was not instant. Like Google, <laughs> nothing was instant. Even when we had the internet, we were still at the mercy of what was out there. You know what I'm saying? But like now there's just so much information 
And the way that these algorithms work in particular, you know, on YouTube and on TikTok, it's like they're just going to keep feeding you whatever it is that you've been watching and they're going to feed you the next most the next most radical thing from what you've been watching. So you may start watching. This was also in that offline episode where you may start seeing a funny meme, right? And then you may follow the person who's who gives that meme, who shows that meme on their, their social media, right? Mm-hmm. And then the next thing you know, they're feeding you this sort of content that is in line with that meme of, of like degrading women or or whatever, the next thing you know, you're listening to a podcast. The next thing you know, you're listening to a YouTube. The next thing you know, you're in these people's pipeline. And that is how it works. That's how the radicalization of it all works. So I understand that, right? But the same token, you can't think for yourself. And and, and I I don't think it's not thinking for yourself. I think it's it's autoplay. Honestly, some of it is like autoplay. Like this stuff is just going to keep looping for you until you log off like that's why a a lot of people even got caught up in these conspiracy theories and stuff at during COVID is because they were at home and they didn't have nothing else to do so they're just watching videos back to back to back to back to back and the next thing you know they all the way at the bottom of the conspiracy theory so it's just like like I said it's important it's important not that (laughs) I'm sure nobody who (laughs) nobody has made it to the end of this video who is actually down a rabbit hole but just in case you have log off x out find something else reset your algorithm just so you can have some other ideas in your head like for me yes i listen to a lot of things that are on the left of it all but i still have critical thinking to be able to be like hey let me go to the source Hello, which is why i'm part. big on providing source materials like if i'm citing something i'm going to tell you what the source is so you can go listen to yourself also when i'm well, reading it on if the, there's the like conversation yeah if i'm reading there's a there's a bibliography sometimes at the end of whatever it is that i'm reading and i'm going to try to find the source if i'm watching commentary about for january 6 hearings like i watched some of the hearings i watched some of the commentary and like, I want to be able to see the source material. I want to know what the source material is. So I can say, mm, y'all mischaracterize that. So everything I watch on the media that I watch too, I'm looking at that with a critical eye too. Like, okay, let me find out what the source said. And I was able, because I did watch the original hearings to be like, girl, you miscategorized that. Now, you know, you you took that too far. <laughs> Even if it's my thing, favorite like, host. The, the, so I, and clearly we are an anomaly because nobody does that shit anymore and obviously like i'm i'm saying this as a as an attorney as somebody who is trained to look at both sides as somebody who is trained to find source materials and in law school they even train you to like argue the counterpoint that you don't agree with like i am I am trained to do that. That is my training in my head to argue and be able to see both sides. Mm -hmm. So even some of the stuff that they say on the left end, I mean, on the far right end, I'm like, you know, I actually know how you got there. I I can follow your logic to figure out how you got there. I don't agree with you, but I can follow the logic. (laughs) So it's like, that's, that's a different skill set. And so I say that from a place of privilege, but I feel like we just have to we have to broaden our horizons Babe. and think a little broader. That's all I'm saying because this it is, is so scary. easy. Because in a minute, yeah, it's, it's gonna be whatever the, the the land was the people in Handmaid's Tale lived in. Yeah, and so think about Rumble, right? I don't know the platform necessarily, Rumble. So DJ Academics, right? He's signing with Rumble. I don't know what the platform is, but what if they start auto playing things that are from these far right? ideologies right so it's like he's already bat. this this is a perfect example like you're already bashing women talking about how talking about bad things about women right so then you just go to the next far next extreme. the next next step it's not they don't go from dj academics to marjorie taylor green they're not going to do that it's going to be a mid there's going to be several middle steps to get mm-hmm. you to that end goal of like being completely radicalized and i think that's what people are missing and like this manosphere type of conversation is going very very deep into these far-right ideologies step by step Mm -hmm. small step by small step 
to your point about this, I'm watching a show right now that's on Amazon Prime and it's called The Power. And it literally shows you literally what Candace is talking about. Um, the premise is like all of a sudden all the women, like the young girls in the population start developing like electricity so they can like shock people and shock things and, you know, blow out electric uh, boxes and all that. And so because they have this newfound power, the men have started to rise up and become like radicalized through like this, this entity that's online. Nobody knows the real person, who he is, where he is, any of that kind of stuff. But they're all feeding into this, this propaganda that he's spitting out as though um, they need to be like the top tier of the the food chain and all those foolishness. It's really interesting to watch that and then have this shit in the background happening in real time. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, the it's the high Amazon value now. men versus the six figure women. It's like it's so direct. Basically, what you're describing right now that power is like women having power to like make more decisions and make be more autonomous mm -hmm. and then you have the they men don't who are trying that. to fight back against that power because that means they've lost control it's like it's so direct <laughs> it's so direct but again like i said i just think that we all have to be aware and if that's the ideology that you truly believe in go off but like and most importantly find other people that want to be over there with you don't try to convert people who are over here you go over there with your people but no that's okay? the point girl that's the point they <laughs> want to convert the masses so that they can I don't want to be converted societies that they see as being the uh most pristine most valued most important and also dear black men like you're going to reach to a certain point where you know patriarchy is going to get you far but you still have to contend with white supremacy white supremacy my dear and you're gonna be doing and this because so, the the women ain't gonna be out there supporting you and your bullshit yeah. the, the so mass you just have to be majority. careful it is a few idiots in the bunch listen you just have to be ever careful and vigilant <laughs> i'm just saying As the people are trying to take you down a rabbit hole, friends. And I just want you to know and be aware of it. That's all. And like I said, I will drop all of my source material because I want you to hear the source, honey. Okay? I will drop all my source material down in the description box. <laughs> all right, y'all. You let us know your comments, commentary, however you see fit, good, bad, or indifferent down in the, in the comments, of course. We do talk yeah. back to you, so be mindful. Don't say no crazy shit. Mm -hmm. I will say no, crazy listen, don't get don't get too cute. Deja Deja will get back with you. I'm gonna still so, listen. I am very clear that I am here for engagement. So if you want to talk crap to me, I'll reply to you 15 times. But just know <laughs> that your 15 responses are YouTube saying, Hey, somebody really likes this in information. So you ain't done nothing wrong for me. Yes, <laughs> sir. So until the next conversation, make sure you all like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you then. Bye, y'all.